Hello, Ms. Chavez. Hi, Dr. Hamilton. How was the rehearsal yesterday? It was fine. It was nice of you being here. <laughs> well, after these sessions by Chris and Lee, I don't know anything that would have helped uh, following them. <laughs> Did you get the extra 10 minutes since there are two of us? Nope. It's still 10 and there's four of us because you forgot about the two students. So we better get started? Let's get started. Go ahead. Um, you th you kind of think that you also say that we might be on the brink of a golden age for education. Uh, Gina, I do. I, I do think that we might be on the brink of a golden age depending on how we um, move forward. Obviously, you see the sorts of things going on here at the Cyber Summit. Uh, but to realize that potential, we need uh, the imagination and the contributions of a lot of people whose contributions and problem solving are still in formation. Kenneth Robinson likes to say that creativity will be the next literacy, and I agree with that. But we seem to sap creativity out of kids. That's a topic we've heard about. And we sure don't think about building or nurturing the creativity of teachers. We seem to consider teachers to be a lost cause. So I think as educators, we're on a pretty sublime quest. Teachers want to keep kids deeply engaged, especially in mathematics, a field that you and I are in. And we need to move away from winnowing out many kids to pushing all kids forward. That's been a topic, uh, that's been a topic this morning of making learning work for everyone. So we want to give everyone their own customized experience. We want everyone to succeed. Wait, wait, wait. But I live in the practical world. Um, I live in the high state testing, the accountability, the pacing guides. So how can we combine the creative world with what I live in, which is the high stakes um, testing? And it makes me think about how do we combine the creativity and innovation that you're talking about with what can we do in the schools? So what is practical for us? And um, I keep thinking about two things. What happens when we make teachers use that creativity to create media that helps the students learn? And what happens when we allow the kids create the media to help their peers? So we want teachers to be creative and we want students to be creative. Yes. And that's a topic that we've been seeing, especially in this session. Um, and we want that to take place in this high stakes environment that Gina lives in. So these are great cyber learning research questions, and you and other teachers have given us some great clues. Uh, we could work in some areas as we research these questions uh, in some of the very exciting things that we've seen, but the topic that we're going to talk about today is simply making instructional videos. Uh, we could work in developing games, developing VR, but right now we're just going to talk about the world of making videos. Uh, we start simple, and uh, our intent is not on what's made, but as you can see from the topics that we've already covered and seen today, we're interested in what happens in the making process, what, what happens when kids and teachers work together. We're not just interested in the objects. That's actually the third part of what we're interested in. We're interested on, in people. How do people's cognition change? How do people connect socially over mathematics? How do they devise and calculate ways to express things? What's the best way to produce a creative space for them to work in? And then we're interested also in what they finally produce. So you experienced all this, Gina. I did. And in the research um, that was founded by um, IES, IE, IES and the National Science Foundation, um, we actually learned how to create videos, how to create videos and edit them and kind of create some media that will be helpful for the students. But we also kind of became really engaged into it and realized that teacher created videos was not good enough, that we needed to get the students involved. So you got students involved, and that was something that the uh, NSF reviewer suggested to us. And uh, I mentioned to Lee that he also suggested this to us when we were first funded by NSF. Uh, Gina, you were the first one uh, with your sister, Wendy. Wendy, raise your hand. Wendy and Gina uh, teach math together, uh, and they're sisters. And you've been at the forefront. Um, and also this, this concept of uh, getting kids involved, uh, and we know all the dynamics of self-explanation, kids communicating with each other, uh, thinking through how they will share, working with teachers, uh, that became the, they became at the forefront of that. Uh, but first. 
But first, we decided that as teachers, we needed to develop some skills before we allowed the students um, to develop the videos. And then we did three kind of level videos. We kind of divide them into three levels. The first level was kind of the basic level, kind of what you could do on a whiteboard, but with a little bit of some features. And then the second kind of video, it, and the first kind of videos are kind of student created. The second kind of video, it's a little bit more involved when the skills kind of become a little bit better, and you embed music clips and web images. And the third kind of, and the second kind of video is more about um, adding complex numbers and subtracting complex numbers. So it's a little bit more complex than the first one. Is that, is that a pun? No, don't ask me those questions. Um, <laughs> Uh, the third kind of video is more about um, adding applets and media clips that we can add into the video so it becomes a little bit more rich and complex and more interactive for the students. So Dr. Hamilton, you le love leading these meetings. <laughs> We're well, good. not these, but uh, working with the teachers, I really do. It's one of the most gratifying things that I've uh, ever experienced. and. Um, uh, I'll tell you right now, I want to talk a little bit about um, getting kids involved in this process, um, uh, both here and elsewhere. Yeah, we, we work with a lot of teachers in LA and a lot of students in LA uh, with creating media for them, but you also work in Kenya with some students and teachers in Kenya, so talk about it. So um, we have, I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to work in East Africa, Uganda, and Kenya. Uh, we've run four uh, media making workshops, and again, the emphasis, is it on the media? No, it's on what happens to students when they make media. It's what happens on stu with students and teachers when they work together. Uh, so I asked, uh, t this is two weeks ago, I asked a young woman, a high school senior, um, uh, by the way, we have all the signed IRBs and everything from, uh, <laughs> so you're gonna see a couple of students here, but um, it's all legal. Uh, I asked her what it was like when she discovered that she was being pulled out of her school to work with teachers. And she just responded, she looked across the table and she said, I felt like someone was finally recognizing my intelligence. Uh, after that, she went back and she made some videos in complex matrix multiplication that my college students in their advanced linear algebra classes would have a hard time doing, and then she went on to some physics. It was pretty amazing. But let's come back to Los Angeles. Uh, here's some reflections by one of your students. His name is Alex. Um, he talks with you about his experience, uh, and in that discussion, he goes back to the question of high-stakes environments. It has changed because it brings us closer now to talk about subject that that I enjoy and she enjoys, and we could work together because we could we could both give each other advice because I could give her advice to tell her like all oh, the students don't like this, and she could also tell me the same thing, and we could both like work hands on from there. And it's really great just working with the teacher to know that, wow, like I'm working with my teacher to improve this class, this subject. That was great. I, uh, we all love Alex, How but. How much work in mathematics oh. has changed after creating all these videos? Well, when I first was doing the videos, my scores on the benchmark were barely proficient, but as I did more videos, as I did more videos, more, more, I guess, ways of doing math got stuck in my head, so my scores went up to advanced proficient, advanced, advanced proficient, like to the highest in the class. I love that expression, uh, more ways of doing math got stuck in my head. Uh, we, lo we love Alex, uh, but let's go back one more time to Kenya, that was your line. Um, uh, <laughs> Here's a response from, uh, oh, press the forward button and then don't press, they told me don't press this button. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> press now look, press look. Back. All right, because there's a button that goes back and then wouldn't you expect that one to go forward? 
Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Okay. I got an extra 30 seconds out of that, so. Okay. One more. I know, I'm getting there. All right, so this teacher says, not only have the four students and myself been transformed, but the stories from the workshop have hit the school like a bug. Everyone wanting to know exactly how this works. I have no better words to express our thanks for considering me for this workshop. Just know that it has created a mark in my life for eternity. The business of eternity, it's a little bit over the top. Well, those are his words. <laughs> Same. Okay, here's our last comments from uh, uh, a student named Sharon from Central uh, Kenya also. So she's a little upset she's getting pulled out. This is 50 seconds, Sherry. It's the last day. Come on, we have cards, we have, yeah. But then, if it's good, we've never been in a place where like, you know, like the students, the adults, you are know, the same, you're at bar, you're doing things together, they're showing us what you're doing, they're showing what you're doing, I think the interaction is very good. And I think I'd love more of this, and like, more students to be involved, and they should be very frequent. Okay. So you feel you feel comfortable in writing. Very comfortable, yeah. And uh, do you think other students will be interested in watching your videos? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so Sharon is a great uh, person, and uh, I won't go through. We we're a minute over, so I'll just say that uh, what this is really all about is getting youngsters and teachers deeply engaged in their own way moving forward, nurturing and leveraging their own creative uh, potential. And it's not really about the videos. Uh, next up, we have a lot of stuff about uh, working with mobile devices, using AI, perceptual agents, affect. Uh, there's a lot going on, moving on from here. Uh, but in the meantime, I publicly want to say, Gina, watching you and, and your sister and others, um, I'm mightily inspired. So I thank you and I thank the audience. Thank you.